Good morning, everyone. My name is David Corey, and I'm with EITC, the Emotional Intelligence Training Company, and I'm here with my colleague, Mr. Kim Cairns from beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, and we're here uh, in part eight of our 15-part video series, one part for each of the 15 competencies that make up the MHS model of EQ, originally based on the work of Dr. Reuven Bar Ohm. Uh, throughout the 80s and 90s, and uh, and we found that this model is a really great model for looking at emotionally intelligent behavior. So understanding how people are functioning socially and emotionally, and uh, and we use the online assessment tool, the Emotional Quotient Inventory, and the Emotional Quotient 360 to assess uh, where people are functioning in these various 15 areas, and uh, and then we can help them to improve. Uh, and be better leaders, better team players, better uh, at whatever it is that they want to do uh, in a more enhanced way. Uh, and so uh, this particular episode is on empathy, and uh, I sometimes say that uh, if, if an organization said, you know, we don't want all 15 of those different skills and competencies, we just want to hear about one, then I would have to choose empathy. I think that empathy has more power on its own to improve communications and relationships than uh, than any of the other 15 competencies. And of course, they're, they're all important in their own way, but, but empathy has this incredible ability to connect us to each other. And, uh, and it, uh, as, uh, as Brene Brown says, empathy drives connection. Uh, the, the definition, which again, Brene Brown has an excellent definition of empathy, it's feeling with others. So it's, it's not sympathy, it's not taking on, it's not trying to take away people's pain, it's not trying to, to uh, silver line their situations. Again, as Brene Brown says, it's, it's feeling with them, and, uh, and which drives connection. Uh, and uh, so, um, Kim, let's, let's talk about empathy uh, perhaps uh, as one of the things that a manager may be dealing with or struggling with in a workplace. What what does it look like when a manager is struggling with empathy, Kim? Well, I think uh, most often there's just uh, it's really evident that uh, that manager is not really hearing what's going on for the people that he's working with. So I think that uh, and and that's often driven by uh, a need to get things done and uh, mm. and you know being being super efficient but at the expense of not really engaging with the people you're working on the project with. So uh, I think that, um, you know, that, that whole notion of be here now. Be here now with the people that you're working with. And it's about, it's about self-awareness and it's about self-management. Um, because if I have a deadline on my mind, but I see that somebody is obviously struggling for whatever reason, of paramount importance is for me to, you know, observe that and acknowledge that with the person. So to be with them in that moment. So I need to manage myself and, and be able to say, okay, I have my own feelings around this. I have my own distress going on. I have a number of other things going on. But right now, what's of utmost importance is to just be with this person right now. Uh, absolutely, thanks, Kim. And uh, and you know, it's uh, a another great saying that goes along with "be here now." Is when you are here, be all here. And being all here means that you're acknowledging all of which makes us human, which includes our emotions and uh, and and everything that we're experiencing and going through, and everything that we're sensing, etc. Uh, and you know, I really like what you said, and uh, and we we find that that's often the case with more traditional managers. And again, we are as a society, as uh, as a race, we are evolving towards a future which sees us being much more expert at connecting with others and right now we're we're not good at it and uh, and one of those things is again acknowledging all of which makes us human and and I think that some more traditional managers feel that emotions aren't involved in the work that they do uh, and so it, it's it is just about you know whatever emotions you're experiencing whatever difficulty whatever troubles whatever is troubling you personally you have to somehow set that aside put that on the back burner 
not bring that into the work that you're doing, uh, that is not acknowledge what's actually going on and carry on. And the, one of the, the, the things that you said, Kim, is I think a great first step in practicing empathy and that's noticing. Uh, we, we have to, we have to uh, look for it, we have to watch for it, we have to notice it, uh, and then it's about a- acknowledging. Uh, and, you know, um, it, we, used to, uh, we used to talk about empathy in our courses, in our workshops, and, uh, and people, uh, I, I thought that defining the concept and discussing the concept was sufficient, but it wasn't really until we started giving people actual steps and actual words to use to practice empathy uh, that, I, that I feel that people really started to get what it was that empathy, uh, that empathy was and to realize the power of empathy. And the first step uh, is noticing uh, and, and acknowledging. Uh, and so, uh, Kim, you know, you, you might have some, some uh, various things to say to someone, but I think it's almost as simple as, uh, as hey, um, are you okay? Uh, so a simple question like that or, or wow, it, it looks like something's really bothering you. Uh, but, and I think what's more usual or more common is that we see it we notice it and we don't open up our mouths and we continue on as if we didn't see or as if we didn't notice. Uh, what do you think, Kim? Yeah, I, th- I think that's so true, Dave. I mean, I think uh, initially it's I don't want to get into a difficult conversation. So something seems to be a bit off with Dave today, but I'm not sure I want to go there. And, uh, and I think that, that again, that's, a, that's another time to, to kick in with your, with your self-management self-talk and say something obviously appears a bit off with Dave today. I'm going to make an inquiry about that. Yes. Uh, you just don't seem to be yourself today. What what seems what, what's going on for you today? Would you like to talk about it? An invitation. So it's a noticing and an invitation. Abs- absolutely, uh, yeah, it is, and it's uh, it's it's providing that invitation verbally, right? It's. Um, uh, the, there's, it, it, it's really the way we need to process emotions is verbally and uh, to try to process them otherwise certainly emotions are expressed in various uh, actions, behaviors, body language, etc. But, but in order to process and really demonstrate our empathy we need to use our words and, and so to open that up in some way. And so, so Kim, once I find out that perhaps uh, something is going on for you, that you are dealing with something that's fairly heavy, um, you know, one, one of the second steps that we want people to, to know about that's available for them to help them along with this conversation is confirming and clarifying. Uh, and so, um, uh, so Kim, do you want to just uh, tell us what, what might I say? So I find out, for example, that... Um, uh, that that your um, someone in your family is experiencing some sort of health issue, uh, and and so you're you're feeling maybe distracted or or worried or concerned about them. What what's something that that I could say to confirm and maybe clarify a little bit about uh, about what's going on for you? Well, I think just an acknowledgement that uh, that what's going on for me is something difficult. So for you to say to me. Uh, well, that must be that must be a difficult time for you, Kim. Um, and uh, is there you know is there something that I can do? Would you like to talk about it more? Um, so it it is the noticing and again the invitation to open up more about it, trying to create that space where it's going to be safe to talk about it. And and I dem- you know you would demonstrate that to me by making really good eye contact and. And once you've confirmed what it is I've said, then I'm hearing that you're really hearing me. You're not just putting up with, with what I'm doing in the moment, you're actually hearing me. So that's your, your demonstration of, of that clarity. Uh, absolutely critical to empathy is, is that piece of, uh, of demonstrating that you are really hearing what, what's, uh, what people need to express. And so there I am. Uh, with my burden of emotion, whatever that might be, and there you are, willing to uh, willing to hear what it is that I need to express, uh, and so uh, just that offer of uh, of being able to to listen and uh, and and for me to talk about what's going on for me, 
that's huge in terms of connection. And so can you imagine what that's like for an employee uh, when the boss says, um, hey, do you, do you want to talk about what's going on? Um, that is a huge communication or, or, or message of caring. Uh, that uh, that my boss cares about me, uh, and uh, in terms of, uh, of of employee engagement, uh, you you've just shot up discretionary effort engagement. You the the fact that my boss cares and has and cares enough to not only notice but to reach out uh, and say uh, in some sort of compassionate, caring way, uh, would you like to talk? Uh, Huge. Yeah, Dave, and I think I think it's important to point out here too that this is not some kind of Pollyanna episode. What may in fact happen at this at this moment is that that person actually may escalate, may, may get may get angrier, um, and so again, it it's it, it comes to me to manage myself, and that 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 anger is not being focused at me. It's about what's going on in that person's life. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, my self-talk is, this is not about me. This is about what's going on for this person. So I need to up that level of hearing, up that level of listening, uh, and, and not, not you know, e escalate my feelings around, around the situation. I will deal with my feelings around this situation later, but right now, of utmost importance is really hearing what you have to say, and if it escalates in that moment, that's part of the process. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, Kim. My uh, speaking of, of Pollyannish or or feeling at all as if this is somehow warm and fuzzy or uh, about uh, part of the the bad reputation that emotional intelligence has is that it is about being warm and fuzzy or it's about being somehow soft uh, or or kind. Uh, well, you know that that is all part of emotional intelligence when used appropriately. But my favorite story, Kim, and you, you've heard this story many times uh, about empathy not being Pollyannish. Is we were talking about this, uh, and uh, and I had a guy uh, it, who works in the oil and gas industry, a big tall guy uh, who works in an industrial yard. With uh, they move heavy duty pipe all around, and these this pipe these uh, pieces of pipe are so large it could easily uh, uh, injure or, or or kill a human being if if one if someone got caught between these pipes and uh, and and so he was uh, as he as he said I just want to be sure this is a this is an example of empathy uh, and he said one day I was sitting in my trailer looking out in the yard and I noticed a guy who wasn't himself. So I opened the window and I yelled out at the guy, hey you, get in my office. Pulled him in the office, said, what's up with you? Uh, you're not yourself today. Uh, and the employee said, well, actually, uh, I'm kind of distracted. I'm kind of worried about my wife. She's in the hospital and, uh, uh, and it, it, sound, it sounds pretty serious. Uh, and so this guy, this big, again, fairly traditional, traditionally masculine guy says, what are you doing here? Go be with your wife. And come back when uh, uh, when you're feeling up to it. Uh, and so, just imagine that uh, that that this guy uh, is thinking to himself, "Wow, my boss. He noticed. He asked about it. He uh, and and then he did a very caring and compassionate thing. He sent me to to be with." The, with my wife, the the person that I needed to be with, and uh, and to uh, to address that situation. So, uh, so in terms of warm and fuzzy, nothing warm and fuzzy about that. There was the noticing, there was the checking in, and then there was the uh, sort of the problem solving around that, uh, which are all critical, important pieces when practicing empathy. Uh, and and so um, so in certain terms of confirming, clarifying, it's like okay, so. Uh, so what is what is going on for you? And uh, and wow, it it sounds like uh, you maybe need to be dealing with the situation rather than being involved in um, uh, in the work that you're doing, which requires your full concentration. If uh, people are to um, uh, to be safe in that industrial situation, so it's about confirming, clarifying, saying you know, being being compassionate. Now, Kim, 
what if I don't have a whole lot of compassion for uh, for my employees? How how do I practice empathy then? How do I? Uh, what if what if it's like you know I just I just can't seem to care about all the issues that uh, that they seem to get upset about or care about it. And we hear this a lot too, Kim, in the different generations in the workplace. So we've got baby boomer managers who've got young, early 20-something millennials in the workplace. And it's like, how do I relate to the issues they're dealing with? I am at a completely different age and stage in life. How, how do what what do you what's your answer, Kim? To how do I care about that? How do I be empathic with those twenty-year-olds? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, Dave. I think that uh, you know often what we need is some kind of mental cue for ourselves in situations, uh, reminders about what's what's actually important. So often uh, I'll have a conversation around, okay, well, what is important to you? If if the feelings of your employees aren't important, what is important to you? And uh, and often the response is well the bottom line I mean we're here to make profits and uh, and drive and I'm here to drive performance and uh, and so I'll just say well if if you have people in a situation where they're not fully engaged in the process because of because of distractions in their life or difficulties in their life then the best possible you know response on your part to make sure that performance is going to be there is to make an inquiry with them about what's going on because as you do that they're going to be more ready sooner to get back to what it is that's important to you so if that's what it takes go with that as your cue to make the inquiry we often talk about discretionary effort Kim and uh, and of course discretionary effort is that effort we put into our work uh, that is completely at our discretion. Nobody can make us work at a particular level. We have to want to do that, and and we want to do that when we feel like we want to do that. And that's the it's one of the best arguments for emotional intelligence in the workplace. And uh, and of course, uh, one of those uh, ways of connecting with our employees is by having empathic conversations and uh, and it drives employee engagement it causes discretionary effort to go up and if you can't care about what may seem like petty concerns of these young people that work with you then care about their discretionary effort and take an interest in what's going on for them and uh, and and particularly when there are uh, uh, are various emotional potential emotional barriers to uh, to their work. That's when you really need to take action and uh, uh, and and again engage in in an empathic conversation, which demonstrates that you care about what they're going through emotionally, uh, and and also um, uh, you, you know one of the one of the barriers in society of us take of, of us being effective in those empathic conversations. Uh, are the ridiculous notions uh, about uh, ab about sucking it up or or setting those emotions aside or what are this what is what are some of the crazy things we tend to say, Kim? And uh, I, I know I've done it. I, I don't know about you, but in the moment we don't really know what to do with all that emotion. We it, it kind of it maybe maybe it takes us by surprise and we're, and we're feeling uncomfortable. And so, what are some of the things we say, Kim? Well, and I, and I think that, that discomfort comes out as, yeah, we're all feeling that way. Yeah, we're all frustrated in this situation. You just need to pull up your socks and get at it. Um, and and that really, those kind of statements just don't go very far most of the time. Now, of course, there are situations, you know, in, in various workplaces where there might be uh, danger involved. So I'm talking more about you know maybe work on the rigs or work on a construction project. Uh, you're not going to have time to to talk about the feelings too much in the moment of somebody about to peel off a girder. However, it's really important to follow up that that uh, incident with a talk around what happened there and what was going on. Uh, so you know it's a it's about that balance of of uh, figuring out what to say at the appropriate time. So. Uh, Again, it's in the context of workplaces. Your, your example about the the guy on the rigs calling the, the fellow into his office is great because what he said was, "What are you doing here?" Um, was not an accusatory statement. It was actually a way of saying to him that I, I don't want you here right now. I want you to be where you need to be. 
And, and so it's the language and context of the various work environments that we're in, too, that's very important. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that I forgot to, uh, I forgot to reinforce was the fact that we have the, uh, the, the question and answer feature turned on for this broadcast. And so if you have a question, please, by all means, type it in. Uh, I, again, one of the common questions that we get is, what if I just don't care? Well, uh, again, it's, it, you must care about something. A and if you care about the performance of your employees, then, then you'll learn how to practice these empathic conversations uh, and learn how to practice empathy. Uh, and uh, hopefully it goes beyond that. And you can see that, that, w that when we care about others, when we care about people, uh, and th then, the, then we'll be more genuine and authentic in our empathic conversations. And of course, if you're not genuine and authentic about this, then of course people see right through that. Uh, and of course, that will drive discretionary efforts down. That, that conveys, I don't care about you when you do this in an inauthentic way. So it's about finding ways of being authentic and authentically caring uh, about others before yeah. practicing empathy. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, a couple of other, uh, other of the steps that we teach people in order to deal with those real serious issues like uh, when, uh, when there's a death in the family, uh, a chronic illness, uh, etc. The, the, those are pretty, uh, pretty heavy emotions for people to be, to be carrying and, and really we're talking about sharing the burden and so, uh, so we, we're trying to partner with people to share that burden and in so doing there, there's a few other things we want to do. Uh, one of which is to, uh, to talk about so what, are the, uh, what are the next steps that, uh, that we might need to take. Uh, and, uh, and these are things like maybe getting someone to sit with that person, uh, helping them to um, uh, maybe make their way home if they're really distraught. Uh, so, so we want to make sure that that person is somehow taken care of uh, in the situation and in the immediate future, and so we need to put those steps in place. And then one of the final steps that, that people often forget about is checking back. So somehow coming, circling around back on that, and that may be at a later time, and saying, how are you doing with that issue you were dealing with? Just want to make sure that, that things are okay. You know, do you need to talk? Um, is that with me or is it with someone else? But just uh, somehow closing the loop on that. Uh, so we've, we've got a, a question here that I'll read. Uh, what are the next steps uh, we as managers should take to make this approach part of the culture in our workplace? Great question. One that goes beyond setting yourself up as an example. In cases like this, we would like employees to treat each other as you are treating them. Uh, absolutely. And in, in questions of you know, transforming something like culture, uh, th there are many ways, of course. And so there's a, there's, a, there's a long textbook answer, which I'd be happy to give you at some point. But the short answer is, uh, that, that uh, somehow there needs to be some some way of conveying a common message, uh, and you know one of the best ways uh, is to have senior leadership take the take the lead uh, in some something like a town hall meeting or a fireside chat where where a senior person is addressing all employees and saying, listen, uh, we want to pull together more as a team, we want to pull together more as a group. Uh, more as an organization and really support each other and one of the ways to do that is through having empathic conversations so we have some training for you uh, and we'd like to to help you with uh, with knowing what to do and how to have these conversations we're not just expecting that everyone's going to to be empathic uh, and there are little video clips there's one that we use that we particularly like which is Brene Brown talking about empathy so uh, be sure and, and look that up on YouTube and uh, and, and there's there's lots of, of again small things that you can do, but of course one of the most important is the role modeling that you refer to, uh, and of course that's not that's not it that's not the the complete uh, package, but it's a great great start. So continue to role model these empathic conversations, and hopefully uh, others will pick up on that. Uh, Kim, what would you how would you answer that question? What what would you like to add to uh, to, to my quick answer? Well, I think uh, I think it's really important to to have these kind of discussions around that leadership table. How how are we walking this part of our our talk, uh, and how are we walking it around this table? How do we interact with each other? How can we better interact with each other? How can we display more empathy around this table with regard to everybody's struggles in in different departments within this organization? So it's it's not just something that we're 
we're doing with employees. It's something that we're just incorporating into our way of being uh, every day. And so I think that's it's important. That's how culture gets shift, shifted is, is when we are being the change that we want to see in that organization. And that means at every level. That's not just in specialized situations. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I guess if, uh, you know, as our time comes to an end here, uh, and, a, and a, to, to try to sum up or, uh, or to encapsulate empathy in some way, it's about acknowledging what's there. That, uh, and really, this is one of the key messages of emotional intelligence is that emotions are always there. Uh, it's about acknowledging them, it's about integrating and incorporating emotion into cognition so that we are operating in a more effective manner. Uh, and one of those critical effective ways of interacting with employees is to know that they have brought all of their emotions with them into the workplace. They're sitting at their desk surrounded by all the emotions that come with being human in this world. Uh, and it's about acknowledging that, noticing the ones that have the potential to act as barriers to effective work performance. Uh, it's about engaging people in conversations about those emotions. Uh, and empathy is the simple act of noticing and caring. Uh, and uh, and that's that one of the things that I would certainly like to leave you with. And and in terms of uh, you know we have a long list of the ridiculous things that people say, and you know we call it what not to say uh, to demonstrate empathy. And and one of those things is I know how you feel, and it's a natural uh, reaction that we have when people are experiencing something difficult. But the actual truth is you don't know how they feel. You, you don't have the same unique makeup of experiences and socialization, beliefs and assumptions about the world, and so you can't possibly know how that person feels. And so really, if there's one sentence to strike from your empathy vocabulary, it's I know how you feel. And go with something like, wow, that must be really difficult, or I'm really glad you told me, uh, or um, uh, or, uh, you know, how, how can I support you? Uh, these kinds of things are, are much, much more honest and better than I know how you feel. Uh, or you'll have to set that aside for now because we have important business to attend to out on the floor uh, or whatever the case may be. So really try to acknowledge what's there. Try to be honest and truthful. An another thing people say is, is it'll be okay. Well, we don't know if it will be okay. In fact, it might get worse before it gets better, and that's being honest, and that's being direct, and uh, and, and really, we don't want to try to sugarcoat or paint a different picture for people. What if it's not okay? What then? You've told you've told this person it will be okay. What if it's not okay? Uh, then, in fact, you have simply said that to protect yourself from dealing with those uh, potentially difficult emotions to deal with. Uh, Kim, other thoughts? We're, we're just coming up to the end. We've got two more minutes left. Uh, final thoughts, Kim, on empathy? Well, I, I would just encourage everybody to think about celebrating the diversity of what's going on for everybody in your organization or everybody in your extended family. And, and we celebrate that, that diversity by remaining curious about what is going on for other people and being genuine and authentic in that curiosity and suspending judgment uh, when, we, when we encounter people that feel things differently than we feel them. So that's a great time to just up that curiosity again, uh, make further inquiries, and I think often the other important point for me is, phew, I'm glad that conversation's over with. I hope I don't have to have any more of those. So remember that you do follow up, check in, remain engaged with those people after you've initiated these empathic conversations. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, here's another question. Um, what, what do I do when someone comes into my office, uh, closes the door, and bursts into tears? Uh, and, uh, you know, this, this is a question that we get frequently. And, uh, and, and the answer is 
you don't really deal with it any differently than any other emotion. Uh, again, following the uh, the our little model of empathy, and we're happy to send you this model if uh, if it's something that you think might be useful or helpful for you. By all means, let us know. It's simply David or Kim at eitrainingcompany.com. We're happy to send you this model, but um, uh, but really, it's it's acknowledging the emotion. Uh, it's noticing it. It is some sort of inquiry, uh, some sort of confirmation, uh, and demonstration of compassion. Uh, and it's uh, you know giving someone a box of Kleenex is a good thing to do. It's uh, you know so so that so they can use the Kleenex to um, uh, to to um, make themselves a little bit more dignified in their expression of emotion. And and really the bottom line here is it's just emotion. Emotion never killed anyone uh, that I know of. Um, people they say people die of grief. Well, that that may be uh, in a fairly extreme cases, but in terms of other people's emotions, it, they are not going to uh, uh, they're, they're not going to create any uh, any further issues other than the issues that have already happened. And so it's just an expression of emotion. Be there, help the person to express the emotion. Uh, and uh, and and again, as Brene Brown says, feel with them. And if you're if you want some references uh, for Brene Brown, we're happy to send those as well. She's written some fantastic uh, books on empathy, vulnerability, shame, and some of these emotions that we're really un quite uncomfortable with. But again, it's all being honest about the fact that we're human, and uh, and being human uh, brings with it all of this incredible capacity, uh, some of which we don't do a very good job. Uh, of uh, uh, of systematically addressing and teaching people skills around. Okay, so our time is up. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, and so on behalf of my uh, my colleague Kim Cairns and myself, David Corey from the Emotional Intelligence Training Company, we'll sign off for today. Please join us again for future broadcasts. And again, you can stop by our YouTube channel anytime you like to check out our other recorded broadcasts. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. Bye for now. <laughs>